and we're on, okay? I have a few requests for uh, associated board grade six uh, questions. So I'm going to quickly work out an associated board grade six question one, harmonization of a melody. Uh, without doing too much explaining, but rather I'll be talking out loud, thinking out loud, and hopefully you guys get an insight into uh, my thought processes. So best of luck with that. And let's do it. <clears throat> let's do it. So let's have a look at the paper. Let's have a look at the question. Here we go. You should be seeing it on your screen. It's from uh, 2015. Uh, grade six, associated board. Now let's read the question. Indicate one card at each of the places marked with an asterisk to accompany the following melody. You may do so by writing Roman numerals or any other recognized method of notation between the staves or by writing notes on the staves, providing harmonic structure. But you can use only one of these methods. So in other words, harmonize this melody, put cards on this melody. Let's get at it. Let's get at it. Uh, now, we are in the key of F. We are in the key of F. One flat is the key of F major. Now, why not D minor? Why not D minor? I do not see any C sharp. I don't see any C sharp, which is the leading note of D minor, and also this melody ends nicely, stepwise, to F, from the fourth degree, fa, mi, re, do, in tonic solfa, in F. So that's a huge giveaway that we are in the key of F. So key of, <clears throat> key of F major. Right, right at the end, right at the end, I see, um, right at the end, I see uh, an opportunity right there. Uh, what is it? No, I'm trying to move that box now. Okay, that's fine. First of all, right here. Now that's a typical ending, which requires, which requires a typical um, set of cards, right? So I'm going to put the cards right there, if this thing will allow me. There you go, right. There you go. The last three cards will be. We have chord one C. Chord one in second inversion on that A in the melody. Followed by chord five A in root position. Followed by chord one in root position right there. Now, in grade five, there's lots of that. They ask you to find a 1C, 5A uh, cadence or progression um, very often. So if you don't know what that is, go back to grade five and have a look. Now, before that, before that, I can definitely see that it could be preceded right there. It could be preceded by call four. In root position. Absolutely. Nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now I can hear sounds. If you can't hear sounds, I suggest you practice your musicianship. Um, now I haven't got I haven't got perfect pitch or absolute pitch, perfect ear. I haven't got that. I just got a very, very good relative pitch, relative ear. Now, um, okay, that, that's fine for now at the end. Um, let's start with, let's start with chord one. Right at the very beginning, I want chord one, just an F major, an F major in root position. Yeah, will do me fine. F major in root position right there. Position, so we have the third of the chord in the melody, the root in the bass, the root in the bass. So that's my, uh, <coughs> that's my, uh, 
that's my base note right there. Okay. Then I have a G, G, C. So second, second, fifth degree of the scale. And uh, now this car, this, this note could belong to car two, could belong to car seven, could belong to car five. Now, I think the best option is two because I want to have five here. I want to have five there and before five, comes two in the circle of fifths. And also it's a typical progression, two, five, something. So let's put something right there. I'll put for two, followed by five, right there. Let's see if I can move that. Nope. And that, nope. Uh -huh. How do I move that? <laughs> Okay, there you go. I hope you can see all that, by the way. There you go. And I will have five right there, five, five. And okay, I have to do something right there. I want to avoid the problem. Now, if I have two in root position and five in root position, my baseline would be this, the G, right here, the G, followed by a C, which gives me parallels between the bass and the melody, between my implied baseline and the melody. And I don't want that. I would have parallel octaves. G, C, G, C. We don't want that. So, I will turn that two into a two B. Right there. Whoops. There you go. So car two in first inversion. So now I have a B flat C in the base and everybody's happy. This is my bass line now, let's see. I have a B flat, the third of the card in the base. And now there's no more, no more parallels. Uh, okay, moving on. After five, most likely thing to happen is chord one. And in fact, I see nice one, chord one here happening. I mean, these notes really spell out one or six. But uh, I might reserve five to six for later if I have an opportunity. So I am going to have chord one here in root position because I have a third year starting. And then it's gonna be followed by one again here, but in first inversion. So third in the melody, root in the bass, root in the melody, third in the bass. Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Um, this, there you go, so. One followed by one B. Now let's fix that. Let's move it, move it, move it. One right there. Followed by one B. No, let's move that. Uh -huh. There you go. One, one B. Uh, mm. Right, all right, this, this, I see another opportunity for something interesting here. Right there. Okay, what that spells to me, what that spells out to me is chord one in root position, followed by chord four in second inversion and back to chord one in root position. In other words, a returning chord, a returning plagal chord, a plagal second inversion, what you wanna call it, never get into an argument about terminology. It's a waste of time. 
it's important to know what a card does more than what we want to label it or call it. Now, uh, so a box for those three. There you go. That is going to be probably one, followed by four C, followed by one again. Right there. Yeah, perfect opportunity for that. Oops. Yes. Oh, that's that. Good. Now, chord one, followed by chord four in second inversion and back to chord one. So what happens there is that the bass stays where it is. Chord one in root position, F in the bass. Chord four in second inversion, B flat in second inversion, also F in the bass. Returning to chord one in root position there. So you have the static, static bass over a changing chord, giving you that plagal uh, movement right there. So just to recap, this and this are two uh, formulas, cliches that you really want to have in your mind, under your fingers, um, so that you can spot an opportunity for them and it saves you a lot of time while working out the paper without having to think too much about it. Just formulas, common practice formulas. So, and very little is left. Uh, what am I going to have here? I'm going to have something obvious, chord five. Chord five. Chord five is what I'm going to have. Keep it easy. Keep it easy. Keep it simple. Keep it obvious. There you go. Chord five. After one B. Perfectly acceptable root movement. Um, and then here, that's my chord six. That's my chord six. Right before the ending. One to six. And then the bass drop into four. Perfectly common root movement. So that would be my chord six right here. There you go. There. Can I move it? Yes. Voila. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, that's it. Let me save this. Oh, maybe not. I'll save later. Right. So that's the question worked out. And this is enough. That's enough for the um, for your exam. But um, just for just for giggles, let's see what it sounds like. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to play it as much as I can, uh, but I'm going to share a different type of screen now. Let's see. So that you can see the cards that I'm playing there. Okay. You should be seeing uh, a staff. Oh, so before I do that, let me also change camera. Bam. Right, and now I can share that screen. Right, okay, QOF. Now, I'm going to be playing those chords. So we have chord one, chord one in root position, so. <clears throat> then there is two B, which happened again. And then followed by five. And then it's in the melodies. So, but on the ti do do, we have one. In what position? 
followed by one interesting version. Three, da, da. Uh, one, six, there you go. Uh, that would be for five, followed by one. And that's the plagal movement that we talked about. By four in seven inversion, back to the one in root position, and then chord six just at the right moment, and then finally we have four da da da. The six four cadential five three. Those are the chords. Those are the chords. If I had to play in tempo, let's see if I can manage. One, two, three, one, two. That's that. Here we go. Perfect. So now I hope that helps somehow. And practice hard, enjoy your practice.